This is an animated book review of Sapiens, A Brief History of Human Mankind. It will be divided in two parts. Part 1 will include the Cognitive Revolution and the Agricultural Revolution. Part 2, the Scientific Revolution, Present and the Future. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe before you leave if you like the material. So, Earth is 4.53 billion years old and humans only been around for 300,000 years. And yet, although we have been around for an incredibly short amount of time, we have achieved so much. No other species have come close to dominating the planet like we have. So how has this all been possible? Humans first appeared about 2.5 million years ago in East Africa, evolving from a genus of great apes known as Australopithecus. These early humans, such as Homo erectus and Homo erectus, eventually migrated, abandoning East Africa for more promising environments. Adaptation to these new habitats led them to evolve into even more forms of Homo, including Homo neanderthalensis in Europe and in Asia. It wasn't until 300,000 years ago that modern humans, Homo sapiens, first appeared. These new species of humans were not particularly special. Sure, they had large brains, walked upright, used tools and were highly social. But so did the other species of human. For example, Neanderthals hunted large game and used fire long before the emergence of Homo sapiens. And yet, despite there being nothing particularly special about Homo sapiens, they prospered and overspread the globe. All the other human species died out. Why? There are two theories. The interbreeding theory suggests that Homo sapiens began mating with the other species of human and that resulted in the species gradually merging together. The replacement theory, on the other hand, suggests that Homo sapiens, thanks to their slightly superior skills and technology, pushed other human species toward extinction. Probably both are likely to be correct. Homo sapiens probably drove the other species toward annihilation and simultaneously interbred with them. The Cognitive Revolution about 70,000 years ago, the brain of early modern humans went through an evolutionary leap known as the Cognitive Revolution. This development gave them pretty instant improvement in brain power. With their improved brain capabilities, Homo sapiens were able to outperform their rivals. They began to form larger, more sophisticated communities, they invented more complex forms of hunting tools, and they even began to establish trade networks. Such advantages meant that Homo sapiens could find food and resources even in the harshest of environments. This revolution in brain power allowed modern humans to venture into the most remote corners of the globe. Starting in Africa, they spread out and colonized Europe, Asia, America and even Australia. Their capacity for complex language gave Homo sapiens great advantages, allowing them to spread and thrive. Human language is incredibly complex and intricate, especially when compared to other species. This gave Homo sapiens advantages of being able to warn one another and being able to cooperate in large groups. There are other animals that can cooperate in large numbers, like bees, but their cooperation is very rigid. There are animals such as chimpanzees that can cooperate more flexibly, adapting to changes they perceive, but they can only collaborate in fairly small numbers, because to cooperate they need to know the other party intimately, and this isn't doable in large groups. The only other animal that can cooperate flexibly and in large numbers is Homo sapiens. And that's because through language we're not only able to share information about the physical world, we can also discuss abstract ideas, like gods, history and rights. These ideas, what the author refers to as common myths, are fictional creations of the human brain. They're the cornerstone of human culture, and they're exactly what allows us to cooperate in large groups, even when we don't know everyone personally. By sharing these common myths around religion or identity or freedom, communities of individuals are forged. Early Homo sapiens lived in small bands, roughly 150 strong, but thanks to language and common myths, it was possible to increase the size of our communities exponentially, from small villages to cities and to the global society of modern times. The Agricultural Revolution During the Agricultural Revolution, humans transformed from hunter-gatherers into farmers, which led to exponential population growth. For most of our history, Homo sapiens have lived a nomadic lifestyle. Rather than settling in one area, they traveled to wherever food was plentiful. But around 12,000 years ago, this all changed. What we call the agricultural revolution is when Homo sapiens stopped relying solely on hunting and gathering and instead began cultivating crops and domesticating animals. Within 10,000 years, almost all of human mankind has settled into agriculture. A truly revolutionary shift. 
Farming may be taken for granted today, but it is difficult to see why our early ancestors favored it over the hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Agriculture is far more time-consuming. Whereas a hunter-gatherer needs to spend about 4 hours collecting enough food, a farmer must work from dawn till dusk on his field. And then there is the quality of the food on offer. Early agriculture provided our ancestors with a small range of foods, such as wheat, which is both hard to digest and lacking in nutrients and vitamins. Compare this to the wide variety of meat, nuts, fruits and fish a hunter-gatherer might enjoy. So, why the change? First, the change to agriculture was a slow, gradual process. With each generation, the process became more societally ingrained. And by the time historians uncovered the downsides of farming, it was too late to turn back. Second, despite its many faults, agriculture has one big advantage. It was far more efficient. On just a small patch of land, farmers could grow a mass of edible plants. This increased the feed and the food supply meant that human societies could sustain much higher populations and thus population exploded. But the increase in population created a problem. How would societies cope with such a population boom? In order to facilitate trade in large communities, humans invented money and writing. Life before the agricultural revolution was relatively simple. If you were low on meat, you could simply ask your neighbors to share the surpluses with you. But the development of agriculture, this economy of favors developed in the barter system. Why? Because of its efficiency, agriculture enabled people to produce food enough for the community. No longer under constant pressure to chase up the next meal, some people developed new traits like blacksmithing and weaving. In order to get food, they traded their finished goods, a knife, say, or a shovel, with the farmers who needed them. But very soon, this bartering economy also proved insufficient. As the trading market continued to grow, it became harder to find someone whose goods you wanted and who wanted your goods in return. It was in response to such problems that in about 3000 BC, Homo sapiens developed writing and money. The Sumerians of Mesopotamia were the first to do this. In order to store the information needed for complex trades, they began etching people's transactions on clay tablets using simplistic economic symbols. This way you could pay the pig farmer in a currency easily convertible into whatever he else might need. And yet, this of course didn't mean the economy suddenly started behaving smoothly and efficiently. In fact, as societies and economies continued to grow, they became more difficult to control and regulate. So what did human societies do? They developed laws to regulate how people behave and systems of authority to ensure that people obey them. Thus, the first hierarchical societies were born, with the king or emperor at the top ruling over everyone else. Although nowadays we see them as authoritarian and cruel, these monarchies of empires of the past provided a great deal of political, social and economic stability. For one, they provided effective bureaucracy that homogenized laws and customs. For example, take the Hammurabi Code, a collection of laws issued by the Babylonian king Hammurabi in 1776 BC. This code was a set of laws instated throughout the entire Babylonian Empire, governing areas such as tax, theft and murder. This code of laws established an empire-wide understanding of what was permitted and what was not. Wherever they traveled or traded within the imperial borders, people knew which laws and customs to follow. In order to enforce their laws, emperors and kings needed people to accept their authority. This was primarily accomplished by dint of religion. If people accepted that the ruler was placed at the top by the will of the god, they would be far more accepting of imperial rule. For example, King Hammurabi legitimized his rule and his code by declaring that he had been appointed by the gods to rule over the citizens of Mesopotamia. This was the end of the first part. Just click the second part down below and watch the rest of the story. If you like the material, please subscribe and like the video.